Yes, good morning, peace and blessings. Um, you know, I just want to continue on what I usually make my content about, you know, spiritual warfare and the correlation between narcissism and, you know, having demonic spirits attached to your spirit, I mean, your vessel, um, you know, NPCs. Um, I want to talk about a word today. Sometimes I usually make my content, I use one word, you know, as a, as a uh, spiritual exercise. I just want to talk about boundaries. You know, in this demonic world we live in, this dark world, you know, this matrix, you know, this demonic spell of witchcraft we're under, there are no boundaries. Narcissism, you know, the world calls it toxic. You know, it glamorizes it, it popularizes it, it commercializes it to be toxic, to be demon riddled, to be filled with spirits, a legion of them. There's no boundaries. Narcissists are energy vampires. When you are dealing with a narcissist, someone under demon possession, under demonic strongholds, there are no boundaries in that relationship, whether it's intimate, whether it's family, whether it's work associates, and you will realize what I'm talking about. You will understand exactly what I'm talking about. There are no boundaries. I've been in every type of narcissistic relationship that you can describe, that you can imagine, that is possible socially and intimately and genetically on this earth. I've been surrounded by narcissists since I was born, other than maybe my mother. Boundaries. Narcissists are, are energy vampires, you know. They're empty vessels. They see the light that people carry, that you carry as chosen, as the light of this world, or as the lover of God. It's from the Holy Spirit. They are spiritually dead, so they latch on to things that are of God, because it is their last chance to feel connected to God. It is their only way to feel connected to God. It is the only way they can. Narcissists come after me like white on rice. And not come after me in a threatening way because, you know, God is almighty, you know. Uh, there's nothing to fear from narcissists if you're truly connected to God, but just attracted to me and reminiscent of the Beatles, of, of Drake going into public. Anyone who's demon-possessed or, or demon-filled, you know, under the legions of demons, have demonic strongholds, will come around me every day because they can, they can sense this. I, I'm a spiritual giant in the spiritual realm. My, my soul, my energy, my, the, the, the vibrations that I, I, I'm pushing into this, this physical realm is reminiscent of a giant. You know, not my physical stature, but my spirit. This, this is a spiritual world we live in, but this is the physical world. But you are a spirit. You are a soul in a vessel. My vessel may be short in stature, but my spirit, my soul is a giant. Most likely more gigantic than people ever, you know, would have recollected if they ever, you know, got a chance to never mess with me and activate me spiritually. You go, because narcissists are the ones who actually activate you spiritually. People didn't realize how gigantic, how massive, and how powerful my spirit will become once they activated me as, as, as a warrior of God. And you as well. You just have to do the due diligence like I did. It wasn't like that at first. I went through many testimony worthy, you know, failures. And not failures in the sense of, you know, I failed. Failures in the sense of I had to go through certain spiritual warfare tactics to feel the weight of them spiritually, emotionally. You have to go through the weight of them. God makes you go through the fire to become a diamond. Because these narcissists, they give you no boundaries. They don't understand that concept. They're emotionally immature. They're spiritually dead. They're carnal-minded. They are reprobate mind. They are 10-year-olds in adult bodies with a legion of demons, which is a recipe for disaster, which is a recipe for, you know, dragging you to hell. 
They don't understand boundaries. They see you. They see people who love God, people who are chosen, the light of this world as a toy, as an as a object. They see you as their car, as their, as their cell phone, you know, as a new chain they got, as, 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 as a new, a new anything, any, anything, they objectify you. So they want to show you no boundaries. They don't want to understand that they are not normal. So most likely, whoever you're around narcissistically, whether it's your family, intimate relationships, or work associates, or your friend cir cir circle, sooner or later, God will activate you through them. Because narcissists and chosen ones and lover of God, lovers of God, excuse me, we're like oil and vinegar. We can't mix, not for too long. We can coexist, but we cannot mix. A narcissist always will activate a chosen one or, or lovers of God to realize who they are, their true potential, their purpose, whether they know it or not, whether they understand it or not. That's how God placed it to be. And God sees your spirit. He sees your heart. He sees your soul. And he will pick the right time to activate you. And right now, if you're listening to this, you might not have been activated yet on the kingdom for the kingdom of light. Excuse me. But most likely you will because I'm chosen. I speak the truth. As soon as I heard a brother named Mark the Messenger preach the truth about what was going on in this society, this dark world, you know, this matrix, I instantly knew who I was. I instantly, and you would do the same. He laid the breadcrumbs for me, others, others as well. Many, many I can name. You know, in further videos, I'll give them their props. I'll give them their, their flowers in further videos, hopefully to coll collaborate with them. But I'm just doing the same. I'm just doing what that brother did for me. Because God chose him to lay breadcrumbs for me, and I'm doing the same. Because I'm paying homage to Yahweh. Because he was activated before me, and I was activated for you. You know, these, these NPCs, you know, these demonic vessels, these narcissists, they have no boundaries. They will not give you a moment to breathe. When you are in a relationship with a narcissist, whether it may be your mother, they smother you. Because they're energy vampires. They're spiritually dead. They're no longer able to live normal lives. They're not connected to their true selves. So they're very codependent on your energy. If you aren't demon riddled if you aren't filled with demons you have to see it you have to realize it people are biologically hacked by demons since 2020 a shift happened in the spiritual realm demonic authorities were given more power able to biologically hack people's vessels and it was around before but it was never on a mass, it was never for the masses like how it is now. The majority of the earth is under demonic possession right now. Least likely, you know, demonic strongholds. At least 80% of the earth right now in the population is under demonic possession. And when you are activated for the kingdom of light, for Yahweh God, and you understand the teachings of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, you will say the same thing. You will understand what I'm talking about. You know, the Bible tells us not to be religious. He tells us to be spiritual. Boundaries. You know, do not get around your church group because they'll do the same. And share certain information that you're feeling. If you're feeling a different way about something that your church group is doing, set boundaries for yourself. Separate yourself. Become more spiritual. Because if they're not preaching that these are the end times, that this is the time of the end, if they're not preaching what I'm preaching right now, that is parallel to the Bible, everything that I'm saying, that I say in my videos is, par is parallel, excuse me, to what the Bible itself says. But if you go into a church right now on a Sunday, they won't do nothing but sing hymns, talk about other things, and gloss over the fact and not even mention that these are the end times. 
You need to set boundaries from that church. You need to become spiritual, not religious. The Bible says to be spiritual, not religious. Boundaries. Because they are, they are wheat. The Bible said the parable of the wheat and the tear. Excuse me. No, it's just a paraphrase. You have to know the boundaries that you need to glorify God. Do not cast your pearls with the swine. That is boundaries. Me, myself, I had to eradicate every demonic, possessed person out of my life to receive God's blessings. So going forward, I can fully glorify him boundaries when you share your body with people sexually you take on the blessings and the curses that are attached to their souls so you must practice boundaries sexual purity you cannot just go around sleeping with every person tom dick and harry and jane because you attach yourself to their blessings and also their curses that are prepared for them in the spiritual realm. It's boundaries. You must follow God's biblical orders. Everything that God sets boundaries for, the devil wishes to pervert. God says, do not sleep with man. The devil comes out with the community. And, and pushes it globally, even in schools. God says, lay with a woman after you have married her. The devil says, sleep with 50,000 people by the time of you are 19. To collect and, and split your soul in 50,000 pieces for 50,000 people to have attachments to your soul. When you sleep with a person... You are attaching yourselves spiritually. You're attaching your souls. It is a commitment that is serious. It's taken serious by God. That's why you were supposed to get married. That's why you were supposed to respect God's boundaries. Because when you sleep around with 50,000 people, by the age of 25... You have 50,000 people's souls attached to yours and their blessings and their curses. You become demon filled. That's why it's being pushed in the masses because the generations before us gained these demons from promiscuous activity, from demonic activity, from not following God's boundaries and seek to destroy the younger because they are narcissistic and they don't want nobody to be better than them. The young women in this generation are being pushed by the older to be whores because they understand and want them to be just like them. Demon filled, demon riddled, souls split and transfigured through different 50,000 various men. Boundaries. You must set boundaries. You must understand and test people's spirits. You must understand the spirits people's under. The Jezebel spirit, the Ahab spirit, Python, Leviathan. Google those, look them up, don't forget them. People are under certain spirits. And those spirits that they are under come with demons. And a legion of them. In different characteristics, different attributes, but they come with demons. Every single one of those spirits that I named, they come with a legion of demons. Every boundary that God has set upon mankind, his creation, his children, Satan wishes to pervert because he wishes and seeks to mock God and he wants you to join in with him. Everything Satan does is to mock God. The Catholic religion is literally a mockery of Jesus Christ. 
if you pay attention, if you're spiritually aware, they have no boundaries between what is idolatry and what is not. That is idolatry. Jesus Christ did not die on the cross to be glorified, to be shown bloody whip on a cross, on, on your chain for you to wear and hang on your neck to go to a club or something. He died for your sins. He died to take the keys of life and death back from Satan to, to make a mockery out of Satan. And that's it. That's all. It was a symbol. Boundaries. If you are with narcissistic people in your life, you have to cut ties if you are chosen. We are like oil and vinegar. We cannot mix. We, it might look good and you put it in the water bottle, but we cannot truly mix. We are not the same. You cannot mix with the spiritually dead in your personal life. I'm not telling you to hate anyone that's demon possessed because you cannot. Because they, they do not know what they do. Like Jesus said, when he was dying on the cross, forgive them, Father, for they don't know what they do. Because they're foolish, they're children, they're, they're carnally minded, they're reprobate. They're emotionally immature. So you cannot hate them, but you cannot cast your pearls with the swine in your personal life. You cannot physically attach your soul to people who are demon riddled. You have to set boundaries. You can't be lukewarm in this war for God. Either you're a warrior for God or you're lukewarm for God. Me, myself, I battle sin every day. I bear my cross every day. I'm 28 years old. I'm about to enter my prime. I have yet to gotta find a wife, excuse me. I lust for women, but I do not lie with women because I understand if I lie with any of these women, I will obtain their blessings and their curses and the same for them for me. And I do not wish to disrespect and let down Yahweh God like that. Just for a night of two hours of, of, of foolishness, of carnal minded things. When I can simply wait for a, a, a heavenly sent, godly sent woman. I do not seek to split my soul in fragments like Voldemort from Harry Potter. That's what people do when you break God's boundaries on sex, on sexual immorality. You split your soul, you fragment your soul like Voldemort from Harry Potter. That's the, that's the choice you make when you don't follow God's boundaries. That's the curse that you, that you take. Me, myself, I've lain with a few women, not more than 10. But before I cut the boundaries and place boundaries, excuse me, and place boundaries against those women and cut ties with them, I felt the weight of their curses. But I don't anymore. Boundaries. My family is a, is a connection. You have to cut ties with people who are spiritually dead because you being attached to them spiritually, you will gain their curses and their blessings attached to your vessel. And I say this not to scare anyone because God is all powerful. These Freemasons who push these demonic agendas, these, these demonic assignments aren't even in power. It's smoke and mirrors. The devil is smoke and mirrors. The devil is not in power. These demons aren't in power. Only God is. But they just don't want you to realize that. They don't want you to reach your true potential and become a warrior for God. They want you to be a sheep beta mindset person just like the rest of these people and fragment your soul in 50,000 places and burn in hell. And, and you're supposed to be happy with it. And you're supposed to just, just enjoy it. 
until you get there. That's what these people want. If you are a Freemason, if you think the Freemasons is cool, you have to Google, you have to do your research. People are so beta-minded in this generation and in the generation before mine, they follow anything they see and hear. And they don't do their research. They don't do their due diligence to understand what is going on. They just follow anything like sheep. It is sad. It is embarrassing. Freemasons is a satanic cult. They want you to go to hell. Why would you want to be like people like that? Why would you want to join them? Why would you want to favor them? When they seek your damnation. You have to set boundaries from, from carnal-minded things, from reprobate-minded things, from this world. God says, do not love this world. Set boundaries from this world. I still listen to carnal music, but I set boundaries mentally. I understand it is just music. I do not worship it. I do not wish to be like these people. It's just music. It is entertainment. You have to differentiate between what is entertainment, what is carnal, what is reprobate, and what is godly, what is spiritual. Boundaries. And before I end this video, I just want to say, not to scare anybody, this video is not for fear. Anything that I speak is not for fear because God is almighty, God is all-powerful. If you are truly connected to God, you literally have nothing to fear. It is just a waiting game with the devil. Once you get attached to God and connected to God and walk and, and walk with God on your path to this to, the, to this, this on this narrow path to heaven, excuse me. It is a waiting game with the devil, but resist the devil and he shall flee. And he'll get out of your life. Surely, but but but, but it, it'll happen. Trust me, I'm a living testament to what I'm saying. And this is not to make anyone fear or anything. It is just spiritual information that I wish to share because it is my job as a lot of this world to share wisdom, to, to bring other people to heaven with me as well. It's my purpose. But if you are in a narcissistic relationship, whatever it may be, the attribute in front of it, excuse me, the, the adjective in front of it, you have to set boundaries. You have to cut ties. Sometimes, most, li most likely, cut ties. Cutting ties is the easiest way, but maybe you can't set boundaries, you know, with your baby's mother or, or you know, people you live with at the moment. So set boundaries and then cut ties. But yes, you have to cut ties. You cannot cast your pearls with the swine because people cannot go where you're going. If you believe in God, Yahweh, if you believe in Jesus Christ's teachings, like how you profess, like how people post on social media, and you have to, you cannot be lukewarm. You have to cut ties with people like that then. You cannot love the world. That is just the truth. It's cut and dry. It is black and white. There's no gray area. And peace and blessings.